let's take apart a desk and drum dehumidifier. These are an alternative dehumidifier system to the traditional compressor-based ones, and they're in a way they're almost simpler, or are they really simple? I'll let you judge for yourself once I take it apart. But a notable feature is that it uses a plastic condenser, which is unusual. And they are capable of taking a lot of water out there. Most notable versus a compressor-based unit, these units will operate down to zero degrees Celsius, which basically means the point that there's no more water left in the air anyway, because it's so cold. And being able to operate in a cold environment is a huge advantage. I don't think they're as efficient as a compressor-based one, but they do have the advantage in winter of putting out a flow of warm air. Typically, they'll have a power rating of between 300 and 600 watts. So... The main bit that pulls the air through, and we'll get rid of it straight away, is the fan here. A standard centrifugal fan, I shall unscrew it and we'll get rid of it, because it's in the way of letting us see all the goodies inside. So out comes that screw, and out comes this screw, to liberate the fan. Noting that if the fan in yours ever stops rotating, but is still free to rotate, the prime suspect is potentially the capacitor in these. If it's making a humming noise, if it's trying to rotate, uh, it's a one microfarad capacitor in these. It's got multiple windings because it has multiple speeds. I should put that out the way. Right down there. Here is the magic bit inside. It's the desiccant drum itself and it rotates very slowly and it rotates through the air path with the humid air from outside being pulled through it and then it goes into this section here which is a heater. Let's take the heater off and we'll take a look at the heater section. This whole thing's coming to bits. That's good, that's what we do here. We like taking things to bits. Things worthy of note in the heater section. On the back we have a thermal fuse and a thermistor to monitor the temperature. Lots of temperature monitoring goes on with these. And if there's any blockages, it will shut the system down. It's got loads of safety features. Here is the heater. Uh, the first ones were based on mica. This one is a ceramic-y type stuff. Oh, it has puffed up, though. Oh, and gone flaky. So this actually may actually be mica. Uh, and the, one of the weaknesses of these units, the heaters used to fail a lot in the early days, and that's because it's in a very humid path of air. There's a continuous flow of air in through this channel at the side and then it flows past the heater and then through the desiccant drum and the idea is that the drum which is made of zeolite and has this honeycomb structure it uh, absorbs moisture from the air then as it passes through the heater the hot air that's being blown through in a closed loop uh, by this fan motor here drives the moisture back out when it does drive the moisture back out it pushes it out into this condenser and it takes a path through the condenser which is being cooled by the air being pulled in through the unit and then once it goes through the condenser it goes back to the fan and gets circulated in that closed loop and it just makes it more efficient doing that let's get the fan off and we'll take a look at that it's not going to be too exciting the fan is also another problem that occurs. Sometimes, well, because in the early days they just didn't seem to understand that when you have moisture in systems, it tends to result in sticky goo, slime forming. The refrigeration and HVAC engineers will know what I'm talking about. It's very messy. But lying water will form slime, and that's exactly what happens with these. Uh, I'll show you how to avoid that problem because it can cause the water to back up into the motor and then it makes paddling noises and it doesn't do it much good at all. Here is the fan motor. Let's just whip all the cover. Let's whip everything apart. Is this actually, I say that, is it going to come apart? Yes, it is. We're going to use brute force. I'll just put this to the side so I can get under the camera here. So nothing terribly exciting in here. It is fundamentally a fan and an air path, but for completeness we shall take a look at it. The bearings can sometimes go in these fans as well, but it's kind of rare. The Where the bearing did go on this particular unit was the motor that makes the drum rotate. I'll show you that in a moment. It wore its bearing out completely, and it's an odd motor. I couldn't find a replacement. That's why this unit got retired. Uh, not terribly exciting. There's your little fan. Uh, 
What can happen is if water backs it up, it can end up going along the bearing here and it can cause uh, damage to the, the shaft and it can cause damage to the bearings of this little motor. But it's all fairly serviceable. You can strip it apart. OK, on to the zeolite drum. Let's take this screw out. This is a little deflector, I guess, that just basically holds it in place and stops it sliding out. And the motor would normally have been in here. And the motor itself is a little synchronous motor, geared synchronous motor. It rotates quite slowly. It rotates around about this speed. It just slowly rotates through the path like this. And uh, this particular motor, just the hole here, well, I'll put the shaft in. The shaft is not a tight fit at all. It's wobbling about loose because it has worn its bearing away completely. And disappointingly, although the motors are quite easy to get, uh, getting the one with a flat on either side of the shaft turned out very difficult to get. So that's why that has been retired. Let's get the drum out here and see how deep it is. It's not that deep. It's approximately three quarters of an inch, 20 millimetre deep. And you can just see through it. If I can, can I show you through it? I can't. Don't know if it. Yes, you can. You can see things reflecting through it uh, because it is just basically like miniature corrugated cardboard wound round in a spiral. I think it probably is wound round in a spiral to actually form this structure. Very hard though. Very brittle. It'd be quite easy to damage it. But um, this this kind of survived intact. Another thing that occasionally happened with them is that uh, the. The deskant will actually, if something moves in here, it can actually scrape across the front of the heating element and cause wear. Right, let's put that to the side. More. This is where the air's coming off, the hot, humid air that's been driven out, and it's going to go through the condenser and come back through this hole and get circulated round again. So there's another uh, thermal fuse here and another little thermistor for monitoring the temperature on and off. Let's get the condenser off. And it is quite unusual, the condenser, because it is made of plastic. I don't think I need to take that screw out. I think uh, it was... Yeah, that's fine, though. I'll just... I've taken it out. So I shall keep going. This is unrehearsed. It never is rehearsed. It's just like, take stuff to bits. Okay. So now we lift it up, and we wiggle it out. And the condenser assembly here... Here's where the air is coming in, flowing up through these veins, across this channel here and then down here. And the water that condenses flows to the bottom and then drips out these two ports. And this is where there's a problem occurs. Because those two little ports go through these holes at the base of this manky thing and into this little sump. And I would recommend that if you have one of these dehumidifiers, then... Take this sump off every so often. Now, you don't have to take the unit apart to do this. You can just pull out the drawer that collects the water and then you can put a stumpy screwdriver in and with a bit of effort, you can fumble these screws out. And once you've fumbled them out, allow me to fumble this out for you. You find... Is that going to come out yet? No, there's another screw. It's got a sneaky extra hidden screw. And you find the little sump collector, which is extremely low. And this, these fill up with slime and then it blocks the path of the water and then the water backs up through the thing. Um, but uh, then once the water, assuming this is clear, once the water uh, has flowed down here, it's got an option. There is a little hose at the bottom here that you can attach to have it continuously drain out the unit. Or... If that's blocked up, the little plug, the water level will rise and then it will go over the top of this one and it will drain down through the hole into the reservoir down below. And the reservoir is a little plastic bucket with a float with a magnet. And when the magnet comes up, it trips a switch in here that will uh, kill the unit. It will turn it off until you've actually changed the, the container of water. And that is fundamentally it. Um, they're very simple theoretically. They're fairly quiet. They, and unlike a compressor dehumidifier, they don't vibrate, they don't buzz in the same way that many of the compressor ones do because it really is just a number of fans. The noisiest bit is the big fan. 
um, and it just creates a whoosh of the air. Then you get these little fans that you might hear a slight purring noise of this going round. Uh, this isn't too noisy, this little fan here, the little air stir the hot air stirrer. Um, but they're actually just, they're very quiet and they just put out that drizzle of warm air. Now, you can operate them at typically the low setting, the high setting, 300 watts and 600 watts. Uh, Typically, I recommend running at a 300 watt setting because if you do that, the heat element will last a lot longer than running them at the full power because these were very prone to failing in the earliest units. I guess, well, I'd hope they've resolved that now and made them more reliable. I've also noticed uh, once... A Chinese seller selling a PTC-based uh, version of this, a positive temperature coefficient thermistor, which should theoretically not be able to overheat. And it was basically just aluminium fins with the things sandwiched in between. But this is a very wet environment. That's not usually that great for for anything. But as the de the uh, PTC thermistors are not that great. If water gets into them, they'll short out. But this is it. Very interesting. Very strange. And the flow of water out of this... Uh, if this is running at, at low power, at night you can hear it going drip, drip, drip. That's the speed the water comes out. So it's actually very impressive. And that is it. That is your complete guided tour of a Descant Drum dehumidifier.